right now as folks are opening their presents. Maybe heavy coats would be unwrapped, but not this year. No, no, not on Christmas Day 2015. Temperatures are in the 60s, the warmest Christmas ever, breaking a record set back in the 1980s. Wow, meteorologist Lee Goldberg in for Bill Evans. Lee, easy to get used to this warm weather, but you know, it does feel a little strange. A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. El Nino year, we'll talk more about that later, but it didn't waste time breaking the record. This happened right after midnight. We hit 66 degrees. And yesterday, of course, we had the warmest Christmas Eve in the lower 70s. Right now, we're struggling a little bit around 60, still super mild, but it's because of some of the fog around. But 66, the warmest Christmas. Last year was mild as well, 62, but we had a little rainfall. Well, the fog had come back in. It rolled in. A bank came in over lower Manhattan after about 8 or 9 this morning. And now visibility is down a little bit and holding temperatures in place, especially city and coast. We're around 60. I think we could get 3, maybe 4 more degrees, probably not back up to the 66 but into the middle 60s, and we are there in Belmar, Wrightstown 65 at 62 in White Plains. We're seeing more sunshine off to the north. Pretty incredible. How about zero visibility at JFK, yet eight miles at LaGuardia and unlimited at White Plains. So you can see how the low visibilities are really confined to the coastline, and then we're starting to see nicer weather inland. There's another two or three hours where the clouds can thin out, and then rainfall's moving in from the south and west, so I think it could be here by the end of the day. Look at the planner even for Central Park, showing some rainfall after after 5 or 6 o'clock into the early evening hours. So the umbrella and the raincoat for Christmas dinner. Meanwhile, you can see on the future cast here, south of I-78 by 5 o'clock, and maybe a decent rainfall south and east of I-287 during the early evening hours before it pushes away. We'll look at the weekend AccuWeather forecast, see if there's any more record warmth in it, and then a little winter chill down the road. Bill Lauren, back to you for now. All right, thanks, Lee. Cleanup is underway for many who survived this week's deadly storms in the South and the Midwest. Unseasonably warm weather helped spawn two dozen tornadoes that swept across seven states. At least 14 people were killed in Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas. The line of storms continued east, dumping rain that flooded roads in Georgia and Alabama. Out of Christmas 2015, so many Christmas activities here and around the world. We're going to begin here in New York City. For some in our area, Christmas morning means Christmas Mass. A jam St. Patrick's Cathedral at midnight, where New York Cardinal Tim Dolan led Mass this morning as well. Our Mallory Hoff was there. Thousands attended Christmas morning Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Cardinal Timothy Dolan quoted a holiday favorite. <laughs> it's a wonderful life. I think of that, that legendary Christmas movie with Jimmy Stewart, and I say to you, it's a wonderful life. Visitors took in the Christmas moment. Of course, the cathedral is breathtaking. It's magnificent. I mean, it's so beautiful. I just love being here. A police presence surrounded the cathedral as people of all ages made their way inside. For some, Christmas Mass at St. Pat's is an old tradition. For others, a new one. Me and my girlfriend, we woke up really early, like 5 <laughs> o'clock in the morning, to get down here. And, uh, you know, we're just really glad that we... Uh, we, uh, we, got to, we got to see it. It was great. Hours earlier, more than 2,000 people attended Midnight Mass. Cardinal Timothy Dolan welcomed refugees to the service but did not identify them. He welcomed siblings from El Salvador and a Muslim family from Ivory Coast. I think you would unite with me as we celebrate this night when Jesus was born uh, away from home into a family that would soon flee as refugees for safety from an oppressive king into Egypt, I think you would join me in welcoming those two families. Today, people came from near and far. We came from Nigeria in Africa. Where did you visit from? I'm uh, from the Philippines. Our kids gave up all their Christmas presents to come to New York, so we're from Tampa, Florida. So it's pretty special to us that they did that. Because family's more than presents. Are you having a good time? Yes. <laughs> a sentiment shared by so many. It was really peaceful and really quiet, and it was, it was nice to spend the first part of Christmas here. A Christmas experience that won't soon be forgotten. At St. Patrick's Cathedral, Mallory Hoff, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A message of peace on earth during his annual address at the Vatican. Pope Francis urged Catholics to spread the church's message of mercy in a world torn by what he called murderous evil, war, and poverty. He also issued a prayer for a quick peace process for Syria and Libya and the suffer that suffering of people from both nations soon comes to an end. And he also denounced ongoing conflicts in Africa, the Middle East, and Ukraine. 
In the United Kingdom, Queen Elizabeth and the royal family attended a traditional Christmas Day church service. People lined up before dawn outside St. Mary Magdalene Church in Norfolk for a chance to get a glimpse of the Queen. Prince William and his wife, Kate, wife Kate were also there, but their young children, George and Charlotte, stayed home. The Queen later delivered a Christmas message. Giving back, a big theme to so many people on this day. Mayor de Blasio of New York City helping dish out food and toys for the National Action Network's annual Christmas Day festivities for people in need. I would assume reporter Stacy Sager at the event in Harlem for us. Stacey? National Action Network here in Harlem. Mayor de Blasio actually just stepped up to the podium to talk, to address this crowd. You can see the Reverend Al Sharpton standing next to him. You know, this is always packed, always plenty of children along with their families at this toy giveaway and celebration. You know, this year the Reverend Al Sharpton is here serving up his um, annual Christmas meal to those less fortunate. Joining him is the mayor. You know, earlier this morning we sat down, we spoke to many of the guests here today. They're all ages. It really helps you put things in perspective because they are all so grateful despite whatever struggles they have endured. I was in a car accident and um, it happened about like four years ago and you know I'm just grateful to be alive. You know what I mean? Because it was hard for me because um, I lost my mother um, uh, last week so you know it was hard for me but I wanted to make sure, you know, in the midst of my loss, that that these families here can have something that they can look forward to. To spend time with your family and enjoy the holidays. What do you hope to get here today? I don't know. Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter at all. It's not about what our material wealth is. And we're back here live where you see the mayor addressing the crowd now. As I said, hundreds and hundreds of people inside here in Harlem. It is a day about blessings. We talked to so many of those kids who weren't picky. They were just happy. They're just happy to be here, happy to be with their families, enjoying this special day. We're live in Harlem. I'm Stacy Sager, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Stacy, thank you. Now to the other news of this Christmas day. We're going to begin with what appears to be some kind of gang violence and it was deadly. The victim, a teenager in the Bronx. Police say 16-year-old Justin Morris shot at least twice in the back last night at Jerome Avenue in the University Heights section. Detectives say he was part of two groups that got into some kind of argument. Morris died at the scene. A 19-year-old also recovering from three gunshot wounds. Police are still su searching for the shooter. A mother and her two daughters in the hospital right now, two of them fighting for their lives after they were run over last night on Long Island. They were crossing the street in Nassau County in the hamlet of Hicksville, Calorama, with the latest on their conditions. A mom and her two daughters are spending Christmas Day in the hospital, recovering after being hit by a car. We're told that mom and her four-year-old daughter are in critical condition, her 11-year-old in serious condition. We're told that the three were crossing Old Country Road when they were hit by a gray Honda Accord headed south on Newbridge Road. Police say the victims were apparently crossing near the intersection when the crash happened just before 10 Christmas Eve. The driver, who lives nearby, did stop at the scene after this tragic crash and was being interviewed by police. The 43-year-old mom and her two kids were rushed to the hospital while police remapped the accident and closed off the streets for several hours. At this time, no charges have been filed. Police say that they consider this a tragic Christmas Eve accident. In Hicksville, Calorama Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Mm -hmm. It was decades ago the Iranian hostage situation, but now Americans held hostage will be compensated. Coming up, a look at how much the U.S. government is giving them. And it's typically the day to open all your gifts, so what if you need to make some returns? Seven on your side with tips on what you should do before going back to the store. ABC 7 NY, the home of Channel 7 Eyewitness News online. Download it, hashtag it, like it. Just use ABC 7 NY to connect with New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Here's a great idea. You know that room you want to redo? Make it fresh and beautiful in just three days. Guaranteed. 
End of year savings means a new room now. At Raymore and Flanagan, save $220 on this entertainment center. $252 on this beautiful chenille sofa. Save $500 on this seven-piece dining set. All on sale with no interest for 60 months. Get your new look for the new year at Raymore and Flanagan. Soon they say it all. Meet the Moors. We're the Moore family, and as you can see, we needed internet that could do more. We do more games. And more streaming. So we need more speed. That's why we switched to Time Warner Cable. You can too. Call 1-844-554-5056. Now we can connect more devices at the same time. The Wi-Fi in this house is amazing. For my guacamole. Hi, Hi Grandma, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Time Warner Cable even has an internet plan for us. Get the internet speed that's right for you, from 3 megs to ultra-fast 300 megs. They even made it easy to switch with a one-hour arrival window. Why settle for less when, when you, you can, can get, get more? Get 50 meg internet for $39.99 per month. Call 1-844-554-5056. You could get free installation, no data cap, and access to over 400,000 TWC Wi-Fi hotspots with select plans. Call now. It's New Year's Week on Live. Let's have a toast. All week, we're toasting with Hollywood. What do you expect? It's a morning show, people. The celebration starts next live with James Spader from The Blacklist, plus Elizabeth McGovern from Downton Abbey. No I love that Mark calls it Downtown Abbey, and it makes me laugh. It's Downton Abbey, and, like, you should, like, know that by now. Next live. Watch live. Monday morning at 9 on ABC7. A painful anniversary this Christmas Day in Jersey City. Ten years ago tonight, two cops killed in a tragic accident. Sean Carson and Robert Nguyen died when their cruiser plunged off an open drawbridge and then fell into the Hackensack River. The officers crossing what was then known as the Lincoln Highway Bridge while responding to a call on Christmas night 2005. They had no idea the bridge wasn't up and wasn't working. The bridge later renamed in their honor. Christmas Eve turned shopping at a, Christmas Eve shopping turned deadly at a mall in North Carolina. An off-duty police officer shot and killed a teenager there after authorities say the teen pointed a gun at the officer. Police say the shooting happened after two groups of people began fighting at the mall in Charlotte. Shots were fired during the fight, sending shoppers running into nearby stores. The officer who shot the 18-year-old was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation. Tragedy overseas killing more than 100 people who just wanted to cook Christmas dinner. A tanker truck exploded at a gas plant in Nigeria. Most of the victims, people who wanted to fill their cylinders to cook for the holiday. Eyewitnesses say a tanker truck ignited the blast when it left the plant without waiting after discharging fresh gas. The plant filled with thick black smoke took hours to get the fire under control. Americans held hostage in Iran decades ago, now, finally, getting compensated. 53 Americans were taken when an angry mob stormed the U.S. Embassy in Tehran back in 1979. As the world watched, they were held for 444 days, released not coincidentally on the day Ronald Reagan was inaugurated for the first time. Now, as part of the budget bill signed recently by President Obama, each former hostage will get up to four and a half million dollars. It's about $10,000 for each day of their captivity. The big ballpark in the Bronx reconfigured to host a big football game over the holiday weekend. Yankee Stadium hosts the sixth annual Pinstripe Bowl. Duke and Indiana will do battle for the George M. Steinbrenner Trophy. Here's a look at the stadium via Twitter just a few hours ago, and you could watch the game right here on Channel 7 tomorrow afternoon starting at 3.30. Still to come, packages not delivered in time for Christmas morning. Well, the changes FedEx is now making to get those packages delivered to you today. Also, the unarmed teen shot and killed by Chicago police. What newly released audio recordings reveal about moments before the shooting. And we take you outside our studios on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Kind of a hazy fog in the air, but it is record warmth as well. It says 60 degrees there, breaking a record from the 1980s early on. Meteorologist Lee Goldberg, never a broken record talking about broken records next. Mm -hmm. But first, here's a message from a member of our military who can't be home for the holidays.
Hello, this is Kim Johnson with my husband, John Johnson. We are wanting to wish my mom and dad, Jim and Sue Lyons, and my sister, Tina Benson, her husband, Dan, her children, Kaylin, Danny, and AJ, a very Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. This holiday message is sponsored by Lincoln and your tri-state Lincoln dealers. It's the holiday eve and I'm in a rush. I don't worry about snow, rain, or slush. These apps on my phone will guide me through snows. They'll even work better than Rudolph's red nose. You'll get through this winter like a star shining bright. Happy holidays to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Do you wake up tired? Are your kids tired too? Do you feel like you need a nap even though you slept eight hours? Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow. Like you, I used to wake up more tired than when I went to bed. That's why I invented my pillow. You can adjust my patented fill to your exact individual needs. My pillow will hold that position all night for you, regardless of your sleep position, to give your entire family the best sleep ever. After I saw the difference that my pillow made in my life, we decided to buy pillows for our children and, and other people in our family because they deserve to have that same night's sleep. My pillow is my favorite thing in my bedroom. I love it. I can't sleep without it. Call or go to MyPillow.com now to order your MyPillow. Use the promo code on your screen and you'll get a second pillow absolutely free. And how about this? MyPillow is the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. MyPillow is machine washable and dryable and comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee and an amazing 10-year warranty. Plus, every MyPillow is made in the USA. I like the fact that it's made in the USA. I like the fact that it works. Other pillows go flat, causing you to fold them over or use your arm for support, which can cause pain. Hard foam pillows can raise your head too high and heat up during the night, making you very uncomfortable. But the revolutionary MyPillow has patented fill that won't go flat and keeps your neck supported and aligned to your exact individual need. My pillow helps you get and stay in deep restorative REM sleep all night long. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Go to mypillow.com or call now to order one of my pillows. When you do, I'll give you a second one absolutely free. Call or go to mypillow.com now. Use the promo code on your screen to get two my pillows for the price of one. My pillow comes with an unprecedented 60 day money back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose. Don't delay. Buy one and get one absolutely free. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Evelyn? ABC7 and your Tri-State Ford dealers thank you for helping protect our children. There's a not-so-abominable... Snowman. <laughs> ...helping drivers get to and from Grandma's house this holiday season. Olaf is on the job outside Binghamton, New York. Actually, that's gas station attendant Daniel Kendrick, dressed as the character from the Disney hit Frozen, Lee, some background music. He's also served customers dressed up as Santa and as an elf, getting into the spirit of things. I mean, what's a snowman to do in this weather? You have to find other work. <laughs> I mean, you can't just be a snowman. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, well, he was always, you know, worried about, or they were worried about him melting, right? That's right, exactly. That's what's going to happen that now. That would happen exactly. now. Right. You've only That's seen that. Sure. 30,000 times. I, I have heard it in the back seat of cars on the <laughs> iPad about 100,000 times. Yes. Not that I would ever get tired of it. No. Maybe we'll be able to make a little snow in the ski areas coming up as we get past this record warmth, maybe into next week. So we'll see what happens. But no, no long term cold just yeah. yet. Boy, is it been something else. Our record warmth yesterday, today. I mean, yesterday almost felt tropical. Today, slightly cooler, but still really mild. We'll go outside where, you know, we've been plagued by some low cloudiness. You know, it's so localized and right near the ground, like just above it. It's partly sunny in many locations away from the coast right now in New York City and some of the fog. But you know, even when you look, I'm just going to put a, a close-up camera down on, on Columbus Avenue. I mean, it looks bright out. I mean, and this is with a really low sun angle this time of year. So the sun comes through from time to time. There's a little drizzle over parts of New Jersey right now where the clouds are a little thicker. But a northwest wind with a westerly component may be enough drying that we could get a few more degrees out of this. Luckily, we broke that record just after midnight. I don't 
don't think we're getting back to 66 this afternoon, but there's the high right there. So the record new from 2015, 66. The record low was one below in 1980. Look at these normals, which we've been nowhere near over the past couple of weeks. 40 over 29. We haven't even been below freezing the entire season in New York City. So look at our temperatures in the Hudson Valley. 62 doing well in White Plains with partial sunshine. 64 Belmar, good visibility now. 59 in Islip. Drizzle reported at Newark at the top of the hour. I think we'll be dry for the most part in New York City until we get to early evening. Then some rainfalls moving in. I mean, I can't rule out a touch of drizzle at times if the fog just comes in and out over the next couple of hours. But I also think there are thin spots in the clouds. This is the area of cloudiness right here through Staten Island and Monmouth where there's a little drizzle. So it is moving eastward and we can get some brightening. We have a window of a couple of hours before this next batch of rain off to the south and west starts to close into southern New Jersey. So that would be after, let's say, 4 o'clock or so, and rain could be approaching the five boroughs by 5 or 6 o'clock or after sunset. Let's see what the future cast looks like now. It's just updated. Look at some heavier rainfall trying to get in by 7 o'clock in New York City. So be careful with your travel if you're headed out for Christmas dinner or out for the evening hours. You will get wet. Uh, best chance to see lighter rains would be north of New York City. The good news here is that it looks like this tries to move out after midnight, and we see some drying. Whether or not we'll clear out like this future cast says, I'm not sure about that. Probably just be partly to mostly cloudy, but we should at least have dry weather to start Saturday. The big thing you'll notice tomorrow is how chilly it is, only getting in the low 50s, and then clouds start to work back in with some uh, resurgence of showers late in the day, but especially tomorrow night. So it's a merry, mild Christmas in the low and middle 60s. Some rain comes back tonight. Probably a window where it's drier through a good part of the day tomorrow, and then occasional rain can come in late in the day. Big story tomorrow is cooler, uh, less emphasis now on the damp based on some new information I'm looking at. Fog at the coast, otherwise breaks the sun. A little rain coming in, especially south, later in the day. There's a period of rain this evening, first part of the night, then mostly cloudy. And for tomorrow, 52 much cooler and rain, especially later in the day. I don't think it's a washout by any means. Sunday, we bump it back up to record highs again. And I don't think there's much rain until, again, later in the day, coming in from the north and west. Big drop on Monday. Rain on Tuesday could start out as a touch of an icy mix north and west before we bounce back to 50 next week. So little signs of getting close sort of normal with time. Yeah, I mean, 52 tomorrow. Come on. <laughs> It'll December feel cold 26. after this. My but goodness. There was a reference to icy mix. I know, I saw that. Right. A little bit recognize that. <laughs> Olaf will be happy. Kind of in denial. All right, <laughs> Thank thanks, you, Lee. Lee. <laughs> is it a lawmaker's Christmas mistake? Coming up, why a politician is facing backlash over a video he recorded. Plus, the gifts are unwrapped, but what if you need to return one of them? Seven on your side with important tips on what to do before you show up to the store. Next, Rachel. Hi, I'm Marie. It's Rachel Ray. Oh, my God. It's Make a Payment Monday. I was wondering if you'd let me pay your car payment. Oh, my gosh. And Rachel's throwing down a five-ingredient dinner. Next, Rachel. World Unites for one epic party. You are going to see it all. With One Direction, Nick Jonas, Demi Lovato, McLemore and Ryan Lewis, and Carrie Underwood Live. Ryan Ferkey and Jenny Hooks. New Year's Rockin' Eve, live on ABC. Do you see a problem we need to investigate? Tip off the investigators. Call, email, or reach out on Facebook. No one exposes wrongdoing and waste like Channel 7 Eyewitness News. In our On the Money segment this Christmas Day, there could be a present waiting for you from your cell phone carrier. Customers of Sprint and of Verizon have one week to now claim refunds for what they call unauthorized charges. Cash is part of a settlement with the Federal Trade Commission for cramming. That's when a company charges you for premium text messages without your consent. FedEx failed to make all of its Christmas Eve deliveries, so today the shipping giant is delivering packages. Its express offices are also open, so customers can pick up packages. FedEx blames the delays on bad weather in parts of the U.S. and a last-minute surge of online shopping. That's what happened to your present for me. That is yeah, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. So let's just assume, for the sake of argument, that maybe you didn't like one or eight of the gifts you opened today. <laughs> like the one I didn't get from you? Yeah, exactly. Well, you can always return it, but before before you do, Seven on Your Side's Nina Pineda has seven rules for happy returns. Happy returns rule number one, organize your receipts. You'll cut down on your wait time for credit or cash back if you provide either paper proof of purchase or an email receipt. There's nothing worse than waiting in a long line of, you know, madness after the holidays and trying to find a receipt. Rule two will also spare you a hassle. 
bring an ID. Many stores require a valid driver's license for returns. And always review the store return policy first. It's printed on the back of your receipt. Pay attention to any dates. You don't want to feel rushed to, or even maybe even deal with the chaos after Christmas, but if you wait too long, you might miss the deadline to get your full money back. Number four, do not get stuck paying a restocking fee. Make sure that you keep the original packaging and don't open up any boxes of items you don't plan to keep. Otherwise, you might not be able to return them or you're going to be paying 15% of the purchase price. Also, if you're shipping something back, make sure you, number five, negotiate free shipping. I found that if you call customer service or you open up a live chat, ask them for a one-time courtesy to waive that return shipping fee. Don't forget, if an online retailer has a store near you, you can usually take it back for no fee at all. Bring it to the brick and mortar store and get your store credit there. Number six, what's in your wallet? Check credit card protections. If you're missing receipts, many cards offer extended return protection or pay to ship items back for you. Lastly, if you don't have a gift receipt or you miss the return window, not all is lost. You can always exchange gifts for cash through eBay or Craigslist. eBay is offering pop-up kiosks where you can bring holiday items that you don't want and you can't return, or maybe it's even items you have at your home that you now replaced with your new holiday gifts. And your bonus tips, sell or swap those unwanted gift cards. You can get cash back. Just shop around first for the best deal. Gift card sites vary widely on how much they'll give you depending on demand. Nina Pineda, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Some really good tips, and if you don't like what I gave you, which you haven't gotten yet, and you may not get for quite a while, uh, you can Ever. just return. <laughs> uh, it may be Christmas, but we have a lot more news in our next half hour. From the Pope to the Royal Family, we'll take you around the world, won't cost you a dime, to show the Christmas celebrations around the globe. Also, the NYPD pulling people over, but the drivers riding away with smiles instead of tickets. You'll see why. And a surprise announcement from the entertainer Janet Jackson. We'll tell you why she's having to cancel her tour when we come. Some full stomachs this Christmas for those who cannot get their own food. Volunteers at City Meals on the Upper East Side of Manhattan putting meals together and sending them out for delivery. The meals are for the homebound and for the elderly. Deliveries are not just about nutrition. They're also about offering companionship. It means human contact. It means, as everybody who ever does it knows, it gives, it gives back more than it takes. By the way, this is the 10th year for this program. An arrest in the sexual assault in Brooklyn. The man arrested, not a man, but a boy, 14 years old. Police say his name is Kevante Davis of Westchester, and they say he's the one seen in this surveillance video taken in the subway station the night of December 16th. They are identifying him because he's been charged as an adult. The video taken shortly after a 33-year-old woman was sexually assaulted and robbed in her apartment building in East Flatbush. The search is on for a woman accused of using a taser on a Target employee on Long Island. Police say Victoria Dion attacked a worker who tried to detain her for shoplifting yesterday afternoon. It happened in Riverhead. The 33-year-old pictured right there is accused of tasing the Target employee with a stun gun and then taking off. The worker was treated at a nearby hospital. Now to the weather. Mm -hmm. Call it topsy-turvy. Go ahead. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Record warmth in our area. And the snow, tons of it out west. Meanwhile, in the south, flooding and cleanup after deadly tornadoes. Meteorologist Lee Goldberg tracking it all. He's in the weather center. Lee. Oh, Bill and Lauren, we're very fortunate to be on the benign, balmy side of this weather pattern because the battle zone going on in the middle of the country, look at just the past 48 hours. What I've put on is some of the storm reports, hundreds of them, including almost 40 tornado reports just from Wednesday. Today, we're looking at flooding over parts of the south. Here's a look at some of the damage this Christmas week. The Christmas Day cleanup after a series of rare December tornadoes from Arkansas to Michigan. Monster tornado. Gwendolyn Jones and her granddaughter lost their home in Holly Springs, Mississippi. At least 11 others lost their lives as more than 24 reported tornadoes barreled through this week. Dumpster. Those communities oh, now coming Dumpster. together on the holiday. Donations pouring into this warehouse for families like the Joneses. Christmas, so... Whether I have presents or not, that's not going to change Christmas for me. The flood watches continue 